Howdy folks, it seems like American Amaros are becoming a thing, so I thought today I would go over three Amaro that come from Brooklyn, New York, and I think they represent a sort of a new American style, it's very bold, very bitter, and you know, pretty good. Let's check it out. Okay, so first up is St. Agrestus. I did a video about them a while back, but I'm including it again here because they're part of this trend of American Amaro uh, that are very bold and flavorful. And now I have three Amaro from Brooklyn, and you know, three's the magic number. So just to recap, St. Agrestus, it comes in a sort of very interesting bottle. It's a little bit expensive, um, but the bottle and packaging are very fancy. They also make a, a red aperitif, uh, they make a number of non-alcoholic Amaro as well as some pre-mixed uh, Negronis and other non-alcoholic cocktail sort of uh, items. So that's kind of neat. But let's remind ourselves what this tastes like. Very dark brown color. It's got an aroma that's like a little bit cola and a little bit like minty toothpaste or a menthol toothpaste kind of smell. Um, yeah, a little bit herbal, I guess. Let's give it a taste. It's got a nice balance of bitter and sweet, a sort of lingering bitterness on the tongue. Mm -hmm. Very menthol, very minty. Menthol and mint are the main flavors. Uh, a little bit of that cola comes through, and it's got like a nice lingering bitterness. I really like it. Now in the previous video, I made an Amaro sour with it. Delicious. But let's move on to Brooklyn Amaro number two. Number two is Marseille by Forthave Spirits. They get their name from a legendary botanist, Robert Forthave, who apparently came up with a, a botanical drink during the plague that was supposed to protect you from the plague. You can see the bottle has an illustration of one of those uh, plague doctor masks. That's kind of neat. They are also from Brooklyn, New York. I had to mail order this bottle, and I got it at the suggestion of a loyal viewer. They have a couple other bottles available as well. They have a gin, a red aperitivo, of course. Everyone seems to have one of those. Uh, they've got uh, a Nocino, a Genepi, and maybe a couple other things. Uh, a pretty wide range. This is the only one of these that I've tried. But let's give it a taste. Now, it is lighter in color than the St. Agrestis, more of a you know, kind of a caramely brown color. It is not as powerful on the nose. It's got sort of a light, sort of eucalyptus uh, aroma. It's a little bit hot, but um, it comes, it's got a lot of eucalyptus, um, a little bit of cinnamon. It's a little bit more herbal, uh, and, and it's got a little more of an alcohol, pronounced alcohol sort of flavor. Um, the bitterness doesn't linger quite as long on my tongue, um, but the flavor is pretty good. I think it's sweetened with honey, but I don't get a ton of like honey flavor. It doesn't really taste like honey, but it isn't super sweet. Hmm. But rather than being bitter, it's it's just a little bit more um, hot, I guess. It's pretty good. I mean, I'd maybe prefer the Saint Agrestis to this one, but um, I would be curious to to try some of their other products. Now, last but not least is Faccia Bruto Alpino. You might remember Faccia Bruto from the green chartreuse video I did a few weeks ago. This is one of the other bottles that they make. And they make a Nuccino and a red aperitivo, which everybody seems to make. Uh, they make a Fernet. They make uh, another Amaro called Gorini, which sounds like it might be a sweeter style. It might be pretty interesting. Uh, and then, of course, they also make the Centurb, which is... Uh, more like a green chartreuse. By the way, if any of you have tried any of the other products from these companies, um, put them down in the comments. I'd be curious to know which ones were good and which ones were worth looking for. Now this is an Alpino, I guess like an Alpine liqueur, so I'm expecting it to be very like piney, you know, foresty, but let's give it a try. Right, Color-wise, this is pretty dark. It's got like a dusty kind of aroma, kind of a, a like dusty. If you saw the video about Pasubio, it has like this dusty blueberry sort of flavor. Kind of reminds me of that. Yeah, sort of like a dusty bitterness, I guess. M mountain herb. Yeah, like like pine, like pine sap. Mm. Uh, like a, like yeah. a lingering bitterness as well. It's almost got like a, almost a Fernetti kind of bitterness. Uh, pretty drying on the palate. Mm, that's pretty good. It's got this very lingering pine though. Uh, pine. All I can think of is pine. And not like a menthol pine. 
a little bit of like that sort of cooling eucalyptus kind of uh, flavor but really sort of predominantly pine like a woody pine or also maybe like a like a cedar or a cedar chip kind of flavor hmm. and it's pretty good i feel like you could use that in place of a fernet in an old-fashioned or maybe jazz up a sour or something like that pretty good but again a very bold flavor like not shy about putting in these sort of very aggressive pine flavored notes before we go further let's talk about my favorites um I think I really like the Saint Agrestis the most. In terms of sipping, it seems to be the most balanced, sort of bitter and sweet. Um, I do like the Faccio Bruto uh, Alpino, but it, it's a little bit aggressive on the on the pine flavors, which I, I imagine for a lot of people is more of an acquired taste. Fourth Ave Marseille is pretty good. Uh, it's a little bit lighter, um, but it has a definite like alcohol, alcoholic feeling to it. I feel like it could be a little sweeter. Um, it does have nice eucalyptus sort of cinnamon rhubarb flavor, but it's a little hot for me. Conclusions. Okay, American Amaro isn't really a category. It's not really anything that has a defined taste, but if these are an indication, it's like they're bolder. You know, they're more flavorful. They're sort of being very aggressive uh, with the flavorings. I think that's because they're trying to set themselves apart from other things that are on the market so that you'll have a reason to pay attention to them, which makes sense. Like Italian Amaros, I feel like are much sweeter, you know, sort of more balanced in themselves um, and a little bit to the sweeter side. But I think that these new, these new Amaros are maybe trying to fit into cocktails in a different way because, you know, cocktails are very popular. And I, for the most part, people, I don't think, sip Amaro straight. I mean, I do, but I'm weird, I guess. Anyway, do you drink Amaro straight? Have you tried any of these uh, Amaro or any of their other products? Do you have any American Amaro that you can recommend? Let me know down in the comments. In the meantime, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. A little intense, but not bad.